Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing all of you how to roughly achieve a sepia effect with color grading inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So here we can see some examples of sepia colored photographs. As you can see, they're usually monochrome, and they kind of have a reddish yellow hue to them. So we're going to try to achieve that in Resolve, taking normal video clips and churning them that color. So naturally, we're going to select our clip and we're going to go over to the color page for this. You could probably achieve something on Fusion as well, but here it just makes more sense for me right now. So I'm going to use two color corrector nodes to achieve this. The first one is going to strip all of the color out and just turn it black and white. And then the second one will add the color back in, uh, bringing in those reddish yellow hues. So I'm going to right click in front, go to add node and corrector. So now we have a second corrector node and make sure that when you do it, you do it specifically in this nodes box. If you don't see that, then open up nodes in the top right. So now I'm going to disconnect this line between the first corrector node and the output. And I will connect the corrector one to corrector two and corrector two to the output. So pretty straightforward. Once again, the first one is going to strip the color out and then we're going to add it back in in corrector two. So click on corrector node, then I'm going to go to the color wheels. So third from the left down here. And we want to take the saturation and just set it to zero. So that's going to give us an immediate black and white effect. We strip all the color out. So now we can change it to whatever hues we want. So I'm going to click on color corrector two, and we're going to also use the color wheels with lift gamma and gain. So taking a look through the photographs, the exact color can vary a little bit. So it's going to be up to you exactly how you want it to look in the end. But we're going to shift the gain gamma and lift over here towards the left side. The other thing I notice in most of these photographs is that the colors tend to be a lot darker uh, than what was in this original sunflower field clip. So if I hide all the colors there, you can see it's a very bright shot. So I'm also going to turn the shadows and the highlights down. So let's just start with that before we add the color in. Let's take the shadows down here in the bottom left, turn it towards the left so everything's going to get darker. And similar with the highlights, it's bringing down the brightness of the brightest areas as well. So there won't be a specific number for this. Just get it to where it feels good. So we can see the original very bright and the updated. Everything's a lot more muted. So now let's do lift gamma and gain. So gain is going to be affecting the brightest areas. Gamma is your mid level colors. The gamma is the areas kind of in the middle in terms of the brightness. And then the lift brings up your shadows. So you could make it pure monochrome where everything is literally the same color, or you can have a little variation where you might have the shadows be more of a red and then the highlights be more of a yellow. So that's what I'm going to try to kind of go for. So let's take the gammas and I'm going to move that a little bit towards the orange. Then you'll notice color kind of getting added back in there. You don't need too much here, so definitely don't go like this. For something like 0.3 or 0.5 should be good. And then with the gain, I'm going to make it go a little bit towards yellow over here. And then with the lift, I will shift this towards a reddish color, but not too much. In fact, I think most of the color might need to be in the gamma here. So I might have made the highlights a little too dark. You can play around with that. So just adjusting that to whatever setting you think looks good, basically. So actually increase the highlights to 15 there. And I think that's roughly going to give us a sepia look. So now what we could do is copy the same color nodes over to other clips to see how it can look in this shot or with this, which obviously has very different colors. So I'm going to select these color corrector nodes and do a control C to copy it. And then over on this page, let's paste in the color changes. Looks like it only captured one node there. So we can just add another corrector node and connect here to here and here to there. And then this one just needs the saturation to zero. So here you can see how the same effect would look over here. But you can see that in this case, the shadows were already pretty dark. So I might go to the second node here and crank the shadows way up, maybe the highlights as well, depending on exactly what you're going for. So the adjustments to shadows and highlights are definitely going to be a shot by shot thing. Okay, so let's copy these nodes over to the third clip, paste it in and add in the other corrector node for the saturation removal. And let's click on that saturation to zero. Okay. And connected to that, basically, we now have a sepia version of this cool ink effect. So without the effect, you can see there's a lot of different colors and it's definitely not sepia. But if we turn it on, we get something very close to our sepia effect that we're looking for. So I think I did a pretty decent job here. 
of taking the clips, turning them sepia colored. Uh, one last thing I'll point out is that if you don't want it to be a true monochrome, you could click on the first node in one of these and add a little bit of saturation back in. That will restore some of the original color and uh, you can take that as far as you want. So on the sunflower, I could add a saturation of five and then you can see some of the uh, sky blue comes back in. So you may like that, you may not. Uh, but if you do want it to be monochrome, just with your lift gamma gain adjustments, leave the saturation zero. So that's pretty much all there would be to doing a sepia color grade effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope this video has helped some of you guys out there. Thank you for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.